In today's lesson, we want to go ahead and start enabling the player to be able to push the button and to be able to compare to see whether or not we got the right button or not. So we're just going to start off with just one button. And one button, I mean, as in the, the list here that we're picking for our game manager. So we're going to go ahead, we'll jump in. And I'm going to start in the play game part. We just want to pick one. We don't want to pick five right off the start. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just put that up there, comment these out. I'm going to go ahead, save that off. And then I want to start thinking about how this is going to work. So right now, if we hit play, our game goes ahead and picks one button and presses it. And when it does, it goes ahead and adds it to the list. And it tells us that it clicked element three, which you come up here is the blue button. Now, when the player clicks the button as well, we want to be able to send that back to the game manager and check to see if we clicked the right button. So the first thing we're going to want to do is be able to have our buttons know about the game manager so we can access a method there. So let's go ahead, we'll stop that, jump into our button script. Right at the top, I'm going to make another serialized field and this is going to be my game manager. And I'm just going to call it GM. I'll go ahead, save that off. Let's jump back into Unity. Open up our buttons. Let's grab them all. And right here, game manager, we can go ahead and put it in all of them all at once. If for some reason you're having trouble, you can do them individually, but I like to do them all at once. Great. So let's jump back into the code. I'm gonna to come to the game manager and I'm gonna make a public method for when we click a button. And this is not gonna return anything, so I'm just gonna say void and I'm gonna say players pick. Well, I don't like the players, let's say player pick. No, it's the player's pick, let's stick with it. I am gonna to wanna to pass something in eventually, but for now we'll go ahead, we'll just leave it empty. And I just wanna say debug.log player clicked a button, great. Uh, put another space in there, cause I like three spaces between my methods. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump back into the button. And we have two methods here where we actually are pressing a button. One is the actual one where we play the sound and we change the color and everything else. And then we have the one where the actual player does it. Now right here is where I want to go ahead and call that GM dot and what's it players pick. There we go. I'm going to save that off and let's go ahead and we'll try it out. So now when we start it, it presses blue. And if we watch over here on the console, Yay! Now, of course, we're not actually doing any checking. But it is firing off. So we need some way to be able to identify each button. And right now, we're going ahead and using the index, at least in the game manager side. We're using this, well, the element ID. I call it the index, depending what language you come from. I will be using them interchangeably. But we're going ahead and using this number here to represent what button was being pressed by the AI in our game manager script up here. Now, if you already know how to use enums, I think enums would be really good here, but we haven't covered it yet. We're probably gonna be covering it right after we do the C sharp events. So if you already know about it, go ahead and implement it here. If not, well, once we cover it, it'd be a great time to come back and try to implement it. So in my start method up here, before I start playing the game, I wanna go ahead and assign the index that we have for our array for the buttons to the actual buttons themselves. So I'm gonna come into button and I'm just gonna make a public for this. And it's gonna be an int. And I'm just gonna call it index, a uh, button index. And for this, I'm actually gonna use a field. So we're gonna go ahead and set the get and the set here as well. I'm gonna save that off. And now we can actually just come in and set the button index for this and also get it as well. So let's go ahead, we'll jump into game manager and we'll need a little for loop up here. And I don't actually want to do it in start. I want to create a new method for it. So void set button index. I'll do it down here. So we'll set up a basic for loop. We've done this before. And then all I want to do is go ahead and iterate through and call that button index and have it be equal to the actual counter at. And of course, we'll want to call that up here in the start. And just to show this working, I'm gonna come into the button. Then when we press it and we're calling the GM pick, I'm actually gonna go ahead and pass in my button index now. And remember the button index is an int. So that means I have to come all the way down here for the player's pick and do int. And I'm just gonna call this pick and I'll concat that on to the end here. So 
Everything should be good. Let's see if we have any errors. And of course, we should actually stop the game before we try that. But let's go ahead and we'll try it again. So it went ahead and it picked one. Which is red. Whoops, I accidentally clicked off of there. Uh, so it went and picked one, which is red. So if we click it. There we go. Of course, if we click, uh, click green, which is, uh, oh, I keep looking up here. But we really should be looking over here. Should be zero. There we go. Uh, yellow is two and blue is three. So there we go. We got the proper index going. So now what we want to do is just go ahead and set an if block. And we're just going to check to see if that player's pick was right. So if pick is equal to uh, button order, I thought we called it. Let me come up here. Color order. So color, order. And for now, since we're only doing the first one, we'll go ahead in the next video and look at looping. But for now, since we're just doing the first one, we're going to see if it's right. And if it is, we're going to go ahead and debug. And we'll just tell them that they are correct. And if they pick poorly, let's tell them that. We'll just let them know that they failed. So I'm going to go ahead and put one more line in here because I like the spacing. And we'll come back in and let's try this out. So we'll go ahead, we'll hit start. Pay attention to which one goes first. Green. So we went ahead and clicked button zero, which is correct. And if we hit blue, because it's just going to keep comparing to that first one in our list over here. We should get it, we should get it wrong. Right, and there we go, fail. Any other one is a fail. So in the next video, let's go ahead and see how we can set it up to, well, start picking more of them and iterating through them for the player. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears.